Hello, hello, and welcome back to Nothing But Real Life. Today we're gonna talk about what it's like raising kids that have reactive attachment disorder. My viewpoint is as a parent. In the beginning, I read a lot of parenting books. As we started doing foster care and adopting, I realized that all of the things that I had put in place with raising my three biological girls, that all of it was actually making the situation worse rather than better. So let's first explain what reactive attachment disorder what would cause reactive attachment disorder. We know that in developmental books, love, comfort, food, those are all things that we learned in our first few years of life. If those things are not met and they are broken, that is when the lack of trust comes from these children and they have to figure out another way of how to meet their needs. So maybe that baby was in an environment where a parent was drug involved. The baby could also have been in a situation that's why we call this a, a disorder. It is not a normal developmental stage for kids. That's why they have such a hard time allowing their caregivers to help them learn, help them in comfort, help them nurturing, help them setting boundaries and rules. Another thing to understand when raising kids that have reactive attachment disorder is in almost all cases, they have the biggest challenges mother figure, whoever the mother figure is, because we cannot come into this world without a mother. The mother is the one that carries the child. Our bodies as women are designed for bringing children into this world. So it doesn't necessarily matter whether the abuse or neglect happen from the mother or somebody else. The mother is the one that these children try to push back on the most. So we've kind of talked about the why of how reactive attachment disorder starts and the reason for it. Now let's talk about some of the symptoms that you see in these children. In their minds they know that they are the only ones that can look after themselves, that they don't need anyone else to do it because subconsciously they have had that attachment broken and they know that the only thing that they can do is to take care of themselves. These children usually portray a lot of anger, a lot of outbursts, a lot of fits and tantrums. These children are really good at hiding their anger in some situations and letting it blow in others. These children are really good at hiding their anger and their hurt in social situations. They're able to stay in control, very well-mannered, very helpful, very thoughtful. Inside the home, you'll see unexplained or unexpected withdrawal, fear, sadness, or irritability. When there are things that are going wrong with these children, you do not see them seeking comfort from anyone. They usually withdraw, pull back, and shut down. Some physical things you may see as symptoms from reactive attachment disorder is failure to smile, or when you do see smiles, they're forced, they're not genuine. You also see them watching social situations very closely, but not engaging. You also do not see these kids ask for help or support in situations that they're trying to work out problem solving. These kids are also not interested in playing interactive games with others. They enjoy more one-on-one -on -one things. What reactive attachment might look like in older children, intense displays of anger or rage, self-destructive behavior, aggressive towards others, lack of impulse control, bossy, severe control over everyone and everything, lack of cause and effect thinking, stealing, lying, being deceitful, false accusations of abuse, refuses to eat or food gorges, hides food, accident prone, avoids physical touch, isolates himself, lack of trust by caregivers or others around them, always searching for ways to have their needs met, lack of remorse or understanding of consequences, destruction of property, victimizes themselves, blames others for their own mistake, 
So from a parent's point of view, what it is like raising children that have reactive attachment disorder, it's lonely. Very lonely. If you haven't lived with it, you can't understand it. Although the judging and misunderstanding by others is painful and isolating, the biggest pain comes from trying so hard to show your children that you love them and want to be there for them and support them and you're constantly being rejected by them. As a mom of these kids, it's my job to protect them, to keep them safe and have them know that they are loved. Because of this disorder, some days that feels absolutely impossible. I have a lot of fears for the future with these kids. Will my children choose to heal? Will they be able to truly forgive those that have hurt them and completely open themselves up to be loved? Will they be able to be loving, nurturing parents themselves? My hope for my children is they will not be bound by their past that they can embrace the person that God made them to be, that they can open up and love others and allow others to love them, that their personalities will be able to shine through as they forgive and heal. I also hope that they'll be able to see all the blessings that are in their lives, that they will have gratitude for the daily joys and the daily triumphs. Because of some of my kids' experiences, they'll be able to relate to some that no one else can relate to. I hope that they will use those to try to help others to heal, and as they do so, they'll find healing in themselves. I hope that they will be able to embrace the goodness of life. I know that I love them. No matter what they do, I will never stop loving them.